Hello everyone, here is another video with OrbCube channel. In this video, I'm going to go over a series of practice problems for SN2 reaction. In the first part of this video, I'm going to go over a series of comparing substrate or alkyl halide to see which one is better for SN2 reaction. Then in the second part of this video, we will have some reactions. For each of these pair, I would like to know which one is better for SN2 reaction and the rate of reaction will be faster for that compound. As we know in SN2 reaction, CH3X, it has the highest rate of reaction. After that, primary alkyl halide, then secondary alkyl halide, and the worst one is tertiary and most of the time normally tertiary doesn't have any SN2 reaction. So the rate of reaction for SN2 is depending to the esteric effect. So if we have a bulkier alkyl halide, we have the lower rate of reaction. Here is the first example. We would like to know these compounds A and B, which one is better for SN2 reaction. To knowing that, first we take a look to the alkyl halide structure and identify them if they are primary, secondary, or tertiary. So if I take a look to the carbon directly attached to the halogens or leaving group, I can see that this carbon is primary and this carbon attached to two carbon, so it is secondary. Based on this trend here, primary is better than secondary, so this compound has the faster rate in SN2 reaction. For the next example, both of these compounds, A and B, they are primary. So the carbon directly attached to iodine and chlorine are primary. So the structure for alkyl group are the same, but the leaving group are different. And we know the trend for leaving group is this. So Iodide is better than bromide, bromide better than chloride, and also tacylate is better than iodide. So here we have iodide and here we have chloride. So the rate of reaction for A is better because it has a better leaving group. For the next example, this alkyl halide, this carbon is primary, this carbon is primary, and their leaving group are the same. But the difference is this alkyl group is bulkier than this alkyl group because of this methyl group. When we have more bulkier, we have more esteric effect, so addition of nucleophile is getting harder. So in this case, when we have bulkier group, we have a slower reaction. So B is faster in SN2 reaction comparing to A. Here are more examples. For this example, carbons here and here, both of them they are secondary carbon, but A has two methyl group close to the leaving group and B has only one. So A is more bulkier and it has more esteric effect. So B is faster. We have the same thing for next example. Compound A and B, the carbon here, is secondary and here is a secondary and compound B has a very bulky group here that preventing nucleophile to attack to the carbon easily. So the rate of reaction for A is faster. And here are the last two examples for first part of this video. For compound A, we have primary alkyl halide and for compound B, we also have primary alkyl halide. But in compound A, the bulky group is far from the CCL bond. So nucleophile can add to this carbon easier from backside compared to compound B, which is primary, but this bulky group are closer to the reaction side. So addition of nucleophile from backside is harder due to the esteric effect of these two methyl group. So A has faster rate for SN2 reaction. And the last one, compound A, this carbon is secondary. And this carbon attaching to the 
living group in compound B is tertiary. And based on the trend, we know that the secondary is better than tertiary. So compound A has faster rate comparing to the compound B for SN2 reaction. Let's have some reaction examples in the second part of this video. Here are the first two examples. We would like to know what is the product for this reaction. So this video is about SN2 reaction, but we, every time we need to evaluate if the reaction really is SN2. We have cyanide here and we have CH3O negative here. Both of them, they are a strong nucleophile and our alkyl halide are primary. So primary and also a strong nucleophile is a sign of having SN2 reaction. So in SN2 reaction, cyanide attack and expelling leaving group and here also metoxy group ch3o negative attack and expelling chloride so the product for first reaction instead of bromine we have cyanide group and in second reaction instead of chlorine we should have the nucleophile o ch3 For this example, for first one, we know this carbon is negative and this sodium is always positive. And this is a very strong nucleophile like the cyanide. It looks like cyanide and it's very strong nucleophile. So this negative carbon is our nucleophile, can attack and kick bromine out of the structure. So the product for first reaction is CH3, CH2, 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 and instead of bromine, we have C triple bond CH. So by this reaction, we can make an alkyne. For second reaction, the oxygen here is negative, and it is our nucleophile. It is acetate anion, and acetate anion can expelling our leaving group, in this case, chlorine, and the product for this reaction is CH3, CH2, CH2, and instead of chlorine, we have O, CO, CH3. So we can make an ester functional group here. In these two examples, we also have the stereochemistry of alkyl halide. So when we write the product, we need to consider to showing the stereochemistry as well. This sulfur here is negative and sodium is positive. So this sulfur negative is our nucleophile and attack here and kick our living group out of the structure. But in SN2 reaction, we always have backside approach and nucleophile attack from the opposite side of leaving group. So if the leaving group it is in the front like this example, then the nucleophile attach from the opposite side. In this case, it is in the back. We have the same thing for the next example. Azide N3 negative is our nucleophile and it can easily attack here and kick chlorine out of the structure. But because chlorine, our living group, it is in the front, then the nucleophile azide should be in the back. But we didn't have any reaction on this part. So we don't change the configuration of this carbon and it remain unchanged during this SN2 reaction. So our reactant was trans, but our product is cis. Here are more examples. In this example, we have iodide as a nucleophile and we have bromine as a leaving group. So iodide attack and we have expelling of leaving group. And because leaving group was in the back, then in our product, Nucleophile should attach to the carbon in the front. So bromine was in the back, iodide will be in the front. 
We may also show the configuration by Fisher projection. It's the same thing. We have SH negative here, which is one of the famous strong nucleophile for SN2 reaction. Then, because boromine are leaving group, it is on the right side. SH should attack from left side. So when we draw the Fisher projections, the top and bottom, they don't change. So we have ethyl and methyl. But because SH attack from the back side, from the left side in this example, then we have SH here on the left side and hydrogen should go to the right side. We also have this shifting of hydrogen in other example, but we normally don't show hydrogen in our structure. When bromine here is in, in back, of course, in the front, we have hydrogen. And when iodine here is in the front, we should have hydrogen in the back. So in this example, also hydrogen change its position, but we normally don't show them. And for the last three examples, I would like to have some example with a neutral nucleophile, like ammonia in first example. Ammonia is a nucleophile. It has a lone pair and it can also attack and kick the living group out of the structure. But because it is neutral, after addition to the molecule, it gains positive charge. So it's going to be NH3 positive. But we can see that the amount of ammonia is excess. So we have more than one mole. So the remaining ammonia, they can act as a base because ammonia has a basic property. And take one of these hydrogen from this NH3 positive. I'm going to expand the NH bonds. So if ammonia take one of these hydrogen, the electron goes to the nitrogen and becomes neutral. So the product will be here. So when ammonia attack, instead of NH3 in our product, we have NH2 if we have more than one mole of ammonia. We should have at least two mole. But if we don't have excess, our product is this cation in addition of bromide. So we have an ionic compound. The next example, this nucleophile is actually very strong nucleophile and its name is triphenyl phosphine. The structure for this nucleophile is like that. We have a phosphorus with a lone pair and we have three benzene ring. That we show this three benzene ring by phenyl symbol. So it is a neutral nucleophile and after addition of this nucleophile to the alkyl halide, phosphorus becomes positive. So here we have our alkyl halide instead of boromine, we have P and 3 phenyl and phosphorus is positive. In addition of that, we also have boromide negative or leaving group. So we have an ionic compound, a cation and an anion. We also have the same thing for this compound. Its name is pyridine. And we have a lone pair here on nitrogen. This lone pair can easily attack and kick the living group out of the structure. So we can have the pyridine instead of bromine. But in addition of that, we have also boromide. So we have a cation and anion. So we have an ionic compound. Thank you for watching this video. For watching more video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.